holy bananas. Today was one of those days where you need Jesus on your side. And we had a little bit of Jesus on our side for, for a bit. And then, and then he went away and then he came back. Um, my God, today was hectic. Uh, let me let me break down BBIG, which has been fairly hot ticker, trending to the upside, a multi-day runner, and today it's having a huge all-time high, hive day, whatever you want to call it, breakout, and there was some intense trading around that. And I, at first, milked it really well, I got, and then I got sloppy as heck, gave it back half my profits, still continued to be sloppy, and then eventually, I rallied a little bit with it, but I wasn't able to um, get full size again. Um, so let me let's let's go ahead and talk about BBIG. And actually, what I like to do sometimes when I'm trading a ticker, especially pre-market, and it's like the leak gapper, kind of like BBIG was. Well, there wasn't any really good leak gapper, so BBIG from yesterday was one of the tickers we were looking at. What I like to do is go to my stats, oftentimes, and just check out, you know, how did I trade this ticker in the past? Well, if I type in BBIG. I, I've traded it 10 times, <laughs> and overall, I'm red on this ticker. So I was like, okay, well, this is one of those tickers where I clearly am not in the flow. So it probably means that it trades a little bit unorthodox, or at least unorthodox based on my trading strategy. So I was kind of coming down here a little bit and checking out some pictures, because I always like to post pictures and comments with every trade. Um, and, and here it makes sense. Look at this price action. Here's a bit of a flag pattern, but it, it's it's uh, a bit scratchy like at best. Like it, it breaks the upside, fakes out, breaks the upside, fakes out, and then sells off and then eventually has this nice um, retest and then rallies. But if you're not getting really aggressive on these breakouts, you're gonna miss it. And then the pullbacks are kind of extended here. So you can see how you get faked out really easily. Just like here, I start getting aggressive on the breakout, then you know flushes, then it didn't have that continuation, pulled back really long and, and very strong for an extended period of time, and then it rallies again. And you just see this over and over again uh, with this ticker. Here again, you know, pre-market really strong move and then just ended and then it sold off the rest of the day. So it's just like with BBIG, I knew I wasn't doing that well on it. So I was like, okay, so how can we switch up our game on it? And, and here's here's what happened. I'm up $1,100 on BBIG and I'm down on ADMA. I'll talk about ADMA at the end. I wanna focus right now on BBIG, what I did and how I could have done much, much better. Um, and today I was using, um, I would say north of $10,000 size. Some of my trades were around $20,000, um, but a lot were around $10,000. My last trade on the day was like $10,000. So it gives you perspective. I'm probably up um, around seven, maybe maybe six to 7% based on my average position size today. So it's, it's not a bad day, it's not a great day, but uh, I wow, I was thrown around like a little rag doll today. Um, Let's, let's actually go here to the daily. So here you can see all-time highs. If we zoom all the way out, actually go to the weekly chart, you can see on this one, um, all-time high here was around, I don't know, like 11.5, give or take. Uh, and then we tried to break to a new all-time high here, it didn't work, a new all-time high here, it didn't work, and then whack, today we are in that new all-time high territory. So this this could be good. If we hold the highs, we might get some great continuation later today. But let's, let's zoom in a little bit more to a four hour to see what's going on here a bit more. So we had a big spike here, consolidation, and those extended pullbacks, they make it very kind of difficult to play this ticker. And then it rips up here, strong strength, but again, pulls back so strong. Rips up again, pulls back so strong. So like in my mind, I was analyzing a little bit pre-market and I was like, okay, well, I can't really trade BBIG like a classic, I feel like gap and go ticker. It just, it's a little bit, weird price action. A lot of you guys in the Discord were also saying that, and I, I couldn't agree more. So let's go back and you know see how I actually ended up trading this one. Actually, let's just go to a one minute chart here. And this is so hectic, you guys are gonna laugh at me. Uh, anyway, BBIG had a great, um, Great power hour here, big move here, 28%, consolidated, nice flag pattern, and then broke out another 20%. And then pre-market, it was pretty much a dud. It, it wasn't really doing anything, a lot of consolidation, and I was like, if we break 10, uh, I might try to buy a morning panic towards 9.5, that's what I was talking about in the Discord. Uh, but you know, right around, I was, I was saying that right around this time, it breaks back above the 10.5, which is roughly around VWAP, and then starts breaking higher. And this is when I'm like, okay, well, there's not a lot going on today, so let me get aggressive on this ticker. And that's when I started trading it. So let's talk about when I started trading it. Um, like I said before, I wasn't super focused on this ticker because it wasn't really doing so much. I wasn't super excited. 
Um, so it, it was, a, I came in a little bit late to the party. First of all, I started looking at it in this area, but I, I didn't have my groove yet. It was, you know, the last four days, uh, Thursday, Friday, Monday was closed, Tuesday, and then today have just been kind of sloppy, have not been good dates. So I wasn't really like, oh, okay, let's, you know, get aggressive on this ticker. But, you know, based on the stats on BBIG and how I have been trading it and, you know, how I, what I learned from my um, recaps, I should be getting aggressive on this one on the front side and be watching out when it pulls back. And that's what I did. So um, let's zoom in here a bit. Before, um, one more. I think I started my first entry. Boom, pulled back. It was a strong pullback, so I entered. Problem was, it didn't, it didn't rally or really there's still a lot of sellers. So uh, I got out of this one, uh, which is, you know, it is what it is. I just kind of cut my losses on this one. Um, and then it, you know, sells off again, but it's actually, yeah, here it pops up one more time, cut the rest of my losses. Then it sells off one more time, but it stops. It gets saved by the nine EMA and I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's average into this pullback. Let's, uh, let's see if it rips. Um, Moves one higher, I average in again, another size. I think I'm long like 1,500 shares at this point. And then it goes along another green candle, I average in again, another 500 shares. And then it pops up one more time, and I average in again, I'm long I think like 2.5 uh, thousand shares at this point. And then it has another green candle, and I actually sell on that green candle. I know I should be you know accumulating, accumulating, but this ticker I don't really trust, and at the same time, four nice green candles in a row. I'm gonna take my profits with the intention of buying back on a first pullback because there's strength right now and I don't wanna let this strength get away from me. So boom, first pullback, I buy in again and then it rips, rips and I, I actually average in right here, I buy more and then the next one I actually start selling because we're getting close to big time resistance here and I just I just know this ticker is like, oh, it's, it's just really struggling in this area and I, I don't think it's gonna ramp through it in, in one clean pull. So that's a little bit bias coming in. I, I try to leave my biases, uh, you know, not at home because I'm actually at home, but you know, I try not to bring my biases into my trades too much because in the end of the day, you, you don't know what's, what's going to happen, right? All, all, all you're doing as a day trader is, you know, you're trying to look for good risk reward. And I just felt like at this point, the risk reward was maybe not so ideal. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to cut your profits short. Um, anywho, it does, pull, it does pull back here. It pulls back again. And I think, okay, well, the sell-offs isn't that really that strong. So I'm going to buy here on the second one. And then I kind of freaked myself out and sold again because I was like, mm, you know, now I'm not really trading like I should be front side, blah, blah, blah. And then I was pretty much done. At this point, I was like, okay, you know, it's 8.30 a.m. Right now it's 10.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I was like, I should just stop trading because at this point I was up $950 or something like that on BBIG. And I was like, okay, good. Um, you know, it's not a hot market. Things are looking pretty, pretty shaky. So I think it would be best if I probably just walked away from BBIG. Um, and, and just, you know, wrapped it up there. Unfortunately, I don't know what I did. Actually, I'll tell you what I did. I did wrap up. I started to make my recap video and I was like seven minutes into my recap video. I was like rambling along and then it pops up here. So in my recap video, I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep trading this one because I was waiting for that kind of move that, you know, volume came in. And then, and then this happens. And then after, you know, just so much nonsense, I basically just stopped that video because, uh, yeah, pff, I, it was just gonna get long and boring at that point. Uh, I do so much live trading, but this is just not live trading. This would have just been, I don't know, you staring, me just staring at the chart, not saying anything, it would have been boring. Um, so I, I tried to average in here before a breakout, it, it doesn't work, I close. Do it again, I break, it, it tries to break out, doesn't work, I close. Do it, it happens again, 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 and again. It finally breaks out, nope, fails, fake out. And I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trades I did here, all didn't work, all didn't work. Um, and you know, if I was range trading, I probably would have walked away with like a $500 profit here, but I wasn't, I was front side breakout trading. So I was only buying roughly near the highs. And then when it didn't work, I would cut my losses again really quickly. So if any of these worked, it would have been a really nice win. But that my, my but unfortunately they didn't work. And unfortunately on top of that, I wasn't range trading, right? So I wasn't selling near resistance and buying near support. I was looking for that continuation. I was buying high with the intent of um, um, selling higher or even buying even higher and then averaging in as it goes. Eventually it does break out and I'm like, okay, well I have to trade it because you know this is literally what I should be doing. Uh, and then guess what? It, it doesn't work again. I click, quickly get out. And then here I go, one, two, three, four, five. I try five more times for a breakout. All don't work. At this point, I'm exhausted. I just traded, I don't know, like 12, 14, 15 times right here. And in the end, I didn't get back that much profit. I, I think I was up like six or $700 on BBIG. So I didn't get back that much of my profit yet. 
Um, and for this amount of trades, it's actually pretty impressive. So it just shows you got to cut your losses quickly. If your strategy, if, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, right? That's why it doesn't really matter how, many, how much you're profitable with your winning percentages. On an average month, my winning percentage is 64%. Sometimes my better months, my winning average is like 70%, but I actually make less money because I'm not letting my winners run or something like that. So the winning ratio really doesn't matter that much. Um, and, and some of the best traders that I follow and, and watch, they're all around like 64%, give or take, um, but that's roughly the average. Um, so, so let's keep going here. Um, yeah, this thing starts selling off into uh, like 925. I, I'm like, okay, well, you know, this ticker is, at this point, I'm psyched out. Like I, I realized I, I was getting sloppy. I was all over the place. I, I mean, this is, this is it's kind of rare when I do this sloppy trading. Usually I'm a little bit more like, whoo, okay, let's see. I mean, look at this, this is pretty tamed here. I mean, compared to this. So I, I knew I was, in my mind, I was getting over emotional. I was revenge trading because, you know, I, I just stumbled so much here. I gave back profits. I was done for the day, but then I, you know, kept on trading and it was a nonsense idea. So I'm, I'm just, you know, going through step by step what happened. And then this ticker spikes up here at the market open. It was ridiculous. It was like a 10%. I was like, oh, I should have just held. But of course, you know, that's never really the answer. Um, but then it flushes all the way down. And I, I'm still not really trading it at this point. I'm not really interested because I know like I'm, I'm not emotionally there yet. Eventually, a few ticks forward, I, I get ready. I feel like, mm, okay, like I'm back in my groove. I have a little bit more clarity in my head. So I'm like, okay, well, we have big time support here at around 10.5 and even a bit lower than that because this is where, like, check out the five minute chart. This is where we had a lot of bounces. We had a breakout here, a pullback, re and we had a retest, two retests. So I was like, okay, this, this area around 10, uh, 10 is a lot of support. So that's kind of what I was waiting for. I had another flush here. And um, then around 10.5, I start doing uh, my first attempt to see if I can get long. Uh, I, I wasn't like super confident, so I closed this one again. Uh, and then it flushes and I do some dip buying here. And if I just held this dip buy, I would have been super, super in the money. Um, but I sold too soon. It was a scratch trade. And I'm like, oh man, why am I like, why am I fumbling around so much with BVIG? I need to give it a little bit more time. This is a ticker that's, you know, for me, tough to trade based on my statistics. So let me give it a little bit more time. Um, we had another pullback here, and I was like, at this point, the reason I bought here is because it felt like there was buyers back. There was a lot of momentum here. This was a strong bounce. And um, based on some of the charts I was looking at uh, in the history of this one, it does have sometimes these really strong retests. So I bought here, and then it pops up, and I sell near the highs of this, this one around 76. It does actually keep on moving up. Um, but I, at this point, I was a little disappointed because I didn't buy higher, I sold. So I was kind of disappointed in myself. It is a ranging trade, not a front side trade, yada, yada. I could talk about it forever. But um, I, like at this point, I realized, uh, and I wanted to buy this pullback too, but I was like, man, I just, I, I'm being so emotional right now. I cannot focus. I like, I, I should have, you know, I'm selling when I should be buying and I'm not realizing if we're in a front side, back side, if, you know, like I'm all over the place. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I have more profit right now than I did um, at my high pre-market after this trade. This was a nice like 3% profit, but I didn't get my full size, yada, yada. I mean, this, this should have been like a one, $2,000 profit if I properly sized into it, um, but I didn't. So at this point, I'm like, I, I think I stopped trading BBIG because my emotions were just getting the best of me. I wasn't doing good trading anymore. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop trading this one. But man, this, this ticker is, it has been kind of crazy and I wouldn't be surprised if we had another move and attempt here at 11.5 and then maybe a new all-time high. It, it sure is a fun ticker to watch um, and there's nice, nice support in this area, but right now it's not giving clean action. And unfortunately, after watching the markets in 7 a.m. today, after you know three and a half hours almost now, I feel like I'm a little bit winded and emotionally exhausted and compromised to keep day trading. So I probably won't touch this one going forward. But BBIG has been a phenomenal swing trade for anyone that um, stuck out this um, this move here, and we're buying any any time the. the the price went back down to the 90 EMA because the, the, the pullbacks are so strong on this ticker. So it's so easy to get faked out on this one. But, you know, the upside has been really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, that's how I traded BBIG. You know, be careful on getting psyched out uh, into, into these kind of things. You know, I always say, you know, trade your front side and then walk away. And I, I, I did. But then I came back during my video when I was like, you know, seeing some good action again. Um, so that was tough. You know, I would rather have my $900 profit right here than, you know, all of this nonsense. I walked away with 200 more dollars, but at first I gave back a lot of more money. I was exhausted. I was kind of mad at myself. I wasn't trading good. 
So I, I think I got lucky for the fact that I traded longer and made more money. Oftentimes I trade longer and I start giving back more and more and more profit. So I, I just wanted, you know, in this video to, for that to be a good reminder. And then also always, always check out how Tigger's performed in the past. I was watching BBIG the day before. I was like, okay, wow, this Tigger's all over the place. I would have such a hard time trading this Tigger how I traditionally trade. So I, I was looking at past performance on this Tigger, not just on the overall charts, but also um, with my stats personally. So I think that helped me a lot today. And I do that all the time. It's not something I talk about quite often, but I love going through my stats and then just quickly looking at the pictures and being like, ah, okay, yeah, it's a bit of a weird Tigger. Look at these flushes they're so strong and then when it does have that um, you know front side move it usually grips quite quick and after you know its front side move is done it seems to be done so it's it's kind of better just to you know walk away and um, I would love to know what you guys think about that but for me walking away after my move and analyzing tickers uh, how I traded them in the past are two things that has have made me not just a better trader but allowed me to take um, home a lot more profits and not leave as much money on the table. Um, let's really quickly wrap up by talking about ADMA. ADMA, I feel like, was one of those tickers that really wrapped up how um, kind of early September has been going. We'll, we'll be seeing tickers like pop up really quickly and then just die off. Um, and, and this is also why I was a little bit, you know, um, iffy about BBIG. So ADMA, if we go to the daily chart, um, has a little bit of a gap area here, but it popped back up and th this ticker, you know, we've traded many times in the past and it just keeps getting whacked at the open. So I knew, you know, this probably, this ticker might flush, but it might have a good um, pre-market because it usually is a gap up. And we had some decent, you know, upside room. We're below the 180 day, which I don't really like, but you know, there's still some maybe room till we run to the 180 uh, day uh, EMA. So let's let's quickly see what I did here. Um, breaks out and pulls back quite aggressively, starts kind of trending here, and then has a bit of a kind of an ascending channel breakout in a way. It's not the cleanest one, but ultimately that's that's kind of what we're seeing here. And once once I saw that, I was like, okay, let me trade this one. I trade into the breakout, it flushes, I close it. I'm like, oh. Uh, has another move here, I close it too soon. Has another move, I close too soon. Uh, has another move, again, I close too soon. Mm, I just, I didn't have the trust in this ticker and then it just gets, you know, sells off aggressively and in this move here, I, I lost money. So I like really poor trading on my end. I should have just been accumulating while we were still on the front side. I could have, I don't know what I would have done here. Uh, if I took profits early, I would have been profitable. Um, but, you know, if I, you know, waited to sell when I should have sold, when we break back below the nine EMA, I probably would have walked away for break even. So I think with ADMA, I, it was sloppy trading. I could have traded it better, but I don't know even if I traded it better, if I walked, would have walked away green. Because if I traded it better based on my strategy, um, technically I should have not been selling here, but yeah, I don't know. I could have cheated that a little bit because the market's a little weaker and took profits quicker. But yeah, I, I don't know. It is what it is. I'm happy that, you know, it's a roughly a thousand dollar green day, especially with this chop we've been having. So I just want to keep sizing up and uh, yeah, keep making progress there. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget to drop a like if you did. I really do appreciate that. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe, make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao guys.